Welcome to today's lesson, which is a continuation of part one on learning how to do calculations when you have a patient with hyponatremia. This is the second of three parts, and in this part we're going to try to figure out how much normal saline has to be administered to reach a desired concentration of sodium. So let's uh, write out our patient parameters here for a moment. Uh, our patient is going to be a female who is 70 kilograms and she walks in the door with a concentration of sodium that's about 110. If you saw the first part of this tutorial you'll realize that this is the same patient that we worked on before except this time with a concentration of, so of sodium at 110 she's having seizures. Now in the first part you were able to determine how much water she has to lose in order to get to a concentration of 140. In this part we're not looking at how much water she has to lose to get to 140, we just want to control her seizures. And the best way to do that is to get her sodium concentration up very quickly. So we've got two options at our disposal. Either we can choose normal saline or we can choose 3% saline. The question is, if we choose either one, how much do we have to administer to get to a concentration of sodium that is what we desire? So we're going to say that our desired concentration of sodium is approximately 120. We're going to say that because we know from our own experience that usually patients who get to 120 generally stop having uh, cerebral uh, complications. That may not always be the case for every patient, but in general you can safely say 120 or 125 and the patient ought to stop having their cerebral complications like a seizure. So for this example we're going to say we need to go from a sodium of 110 milliequivalents per liter to 120 milliequivalents per liter and we can do that by one of two methods either through normal saline administration or 3% saline administration we want to know how much of each. And in this part of the tutorial we're just going to focus on normal saline. How much normal saline do we have to give to go from 110 to 120? So let's try to figure that out. Now you'll remember um, the two main rules of doing calculations when patients have hyponatremia. Number one, that changes in concentration of sodium generally occur because of changes in water. And number two, the changes in concentration of sodium usually have nothing to do with the changes in total body sodium. So we're going to keep these two principles in the back of our mind while we do this calculation. So let's say that we've got this patient who's 70 kilograms and she's a female and she starts out with a concentration of sodium of 110. Well we're able to figure out what her total body sodium is by doing a simple calculation. So what we'll do is we'll say your total body water which is about 60% of her weight or 50% whatever you believe but we'll do 50% that makes the numbers easier times her concentration of sodium as it stands right now which is 110. This ought to give us the total amount of sodium in her body. So that's what she's starting out with. Now we are going to give her some normal saline. So to this, to this, we're going to give her some normal saline, which is about 0.9% sodium chloride. That's normal saline. Well, normal saline has two components. It has salt in it or sodium and it has some water in it. So we're going to be adding both salt and water to this patient. 
And the question is, how much do we have to add? Well, we know how much sodium she starts out with. And to that, we're going to add some salt from the normal saline. Normal saline has about 154 milliequivalents per liter of sodium. And X represents the amount, the quantity, the volume of normal saline that we administer. So this quantity is the total milliequivalents of sodium that we're giving her, and we're going to add that to her total body sodium all that she already has. We have to divide that by the amount of water that's in her body. Well, we know that how much that is. It's total body water. But we're also going to be giving her some volume from the normal saline. And we want all of this to equal our desired concentration of sodium, which is what, which is what we labeled as 120. So let's walk through this one more time. We said that the change in the concentration of sodium does not reflect the change in the total amount of sodium. So we calculated the total amount of sodium. 3,850 milliequivalents. But in this case, we're administering a solution that has both sodium and water in it. So we're going to change the sodium, total sodium content, and we're going to change the total amount of water. But we're doing that in a very controlled manner. We can say controlled because we know that there's 154 milliequivalents of sodium for every liter of normal saline we administer. And what we want to know is how many liters of normal saline do we have to administer. So we add this term to the 3850. And then we divide by the total amount of water that she possesses, which is her total body water, plus the extra amount of normal saline we gave her. And our desired concentration is 120. So I've done this math for you already. And what you end up getting for x is approximately so this patient who's seizing is going to need 10.3 liters of normal saline administered to her if you want to bring her concentration from 110 to 120. Now the rate at which you give that is all going to depend on factors such as your access, how quickly she can take the fluid, whether she has any other comorbid conditions that would predispose her to edema, specifically pulmonary edema, which would limit the amount of X or normal saline that you can give. But if you wanted to go from 110 to 120, you need to give this much amount of normal saline. So that's how we calculate the amount of normal saline to give to someone who has a sodium concentration that needs to be adjusted. We're going to do an another calculation which uses 3% saline, a little bit trickier but pretty much with the same principle and hopefully you'll see how much different the amount of volume is required in order to achieve this target sodium.